What do you notice with the arrangement of items and goods when you go to a supermarket? You may notice that they are arranged accordingly, right? You may notice that this section is for frozen food, this section is for canned goods, this section is for toiletries, this section is for chips, etc. Everything is arranged accordingly and they are classified according to their similarities. Classification allows you to find one item among many without having to look at each item. It allows you to understand the relationships among the items and the group of items being classified. Good day researchers! This is me again, Teacher Tin May. Welcome to our YouTube channel. For today's lesson vlog, we're going to discuss the next basic science process skill which is classification. Pero bago tayo magpatuloy, pindutin mo muna ang subscribe button, like, and the notification bell para naman updated kayo sa mga susunod pa nating lesson vlog about research. We are now on our week 6, module 6 in research 1. And after going through this lesson vlog, you are expected to classify objects and events according to their observable characteristics. In this lesson vlog, what we're going to discuss is the definition of classification, what are the stages of classification, and what is the difference between comparing and contrasting. Classification is a way of sorting, and when we say sorting, this is a way of creating order or making sense out of a large collection of objects by using our observation skills to notice what things have in common with each other and how they are different from one another. So kapag kasi sinabi natin classification, ito yung paraan kung saan uh, tinitingnan muna natin yung mga bagay na magkakasama and then by using our observation skills, anong sabi? Kailangan nating hanapin kung ano ang magkakatulad sa bagay na ito at ano ang magkakaiba. So kapag classification, kumbaga parang iginugrupo natin ang mga bagay na ito according sa kanilang pare-parehas na characteristics or pare-parehas na physical appearance or kung ano man ang kanilang pagkakatulad. Yung classification, hindi nyo lang napapansin, pero araw-araw nyo na yung ginagawa sa inyong araw-araw na buhay. Okay, tingnan nyo sa bahay, kapag di ba nagtitip-tip kayo ng mga damit. So, paano nyo ba ina-arrange yung mga damit ninyo? Hindi ba minsan ina-arrange natin siya according sa kulay? Magkakasama yung color white, yung color pink, yung color blue, yung color black, and then saka natin siya nilalagay sa ating mga drawer. Or, minsan naman, ang a way of classifying natin yung sa mga objects na yun or sa mga damit na yun, eh, paghihiwalay natin, alin ba dito yung mga pambahay, alin ba dito yung mga pang, uh, pang malakasan na damit at pang alis na damit. So, ganun yung classification. Hinahanap muna natin yung magkakatulad sa mga bagay na ito and then, saka natin siya iginugroup. Another example, di ba kapag nag-grocery kayo, Naado na kayo sa counter, sa cashier at magbabayad na kayo. Paano ibinabox at paano binabalot ang mga pinamili nyo? Di ba pinagsasama-sama nila kung alin yung frozen food, alin yung magkakasama na gamit sa kusina, alin yung, at inihihiwalay naman nila yung mga gamit na mga sabon at saka yung mga, uh, for example, yung mga downy, mga shampoo. Yun. Kung baga pinagsasama-sama nila kung alin doon yung magkakatulad para yun yung pagsasama-samahin. So, that is also an example of classification. Classifying things into different categories prevents the loss of new information. We categorize by identifying the differences and similarities between objects and how they relate to one another. Classification is the foundation for the creation of all concepts. Classification is the classification or ordering of phenomena according to the scheme in place. Objects and incidents can be categorized on the basis of observations. Classification keys are used to position objects inside the scheme as well as to retrieve information from the scheme. Classification allows you to find one item among many without having to look at each item. It also allows you to understand relationships among the items and the groups of items being classified. 
For example, the school library contains between 500 to 6,000 volumes. If these books are placed on the shelves at random, looking up some information for the next day's biology class might take you the whole day or longer. However, finding the needed information can be done in a relatively short time if books are grouped into categories such as fiction, biography, science, etc. Each book in these categories is then arranged alphabetically or by number assigned to it. There are three stages of classification. Number one is the single stage classification. Number two, we have the multi-stage classification. And number three, we have the serial ordering classification. Single stage classification involves splitting of a group of objects into two or more subsets on the basis of at least one measurable element. So in this single stage classification, uh, okay, objects can be classified into binary categories. When we say binary categories, ibig sabihin pwedeng hanggang dalawa yung classification natin. For example, uh, yung animals, okay, you classify them as vertebrate and invertebrate animals. For example, magnetic and non-magnetic or for example, plastic or wood. So that is an example of binary categories. But pwede rin naman na more than two categories. For example, yung mga objects, uh, sinort mo sila according to colors. So for example, okay, lahat ng blue, yellow, red, uh, black, white. Okay, and another example, pwede rin naman na or for example, you classify the animals as reptile, mammal, amphibians, fish. Those are examples of single stage classification. Now, how about the second classification which is the multi-stage classification? Okay, in multi-stage classification, sets are sorted into subsets and these subsets are sorted again and again. And this produces a range of levels or stages of subsets. Okay, what is an example of multi-stage classification? Okay, for example, first, you have to sort out plastics from wood. And then after sorting that, you sort out the plastic ones by the color. So for example, na sort mo na siya into red, yellow, or green. And then afterwards, okay, each color, you have to sort it according to sizes. So para nagkaroon tayo ng multi-stage wherein nung una, plastic muna and wood. And then, nung nasort mo na yung mga plastic, sinort out mo naman siya according to colors. And then, after sorting those colors, yung, cool, yung col color naman, sinort mo naman siya according to their sizes. So, that is an example of multi-stage classification. Okay, number three, we have the serial ordering. In serial ordering, objects are put in order by the degree in which they have a certain property. Okay, ano naman yung example ng serial ordering? That is very easy. For example, elements may be placed according to lightest to heaviest or for example, largest to smallest size. That is an example of serial ordering. Okay, since we are talking about classification and we know that when, do, when we do classifying, we order them according to their differences and similarities. Now, let us talk about comparing and contrasting. So, what is the difference between these two? The method of comparing and contrasting can be a powerful analytical device as it can help you uncover facts that you do not know and it can contribute to a better decision making. When you are comparing, you identify the similar characteristics as well as the variations between objects, events, or ideas in order to highlight their variations. However, in contrasting, when you contrast, you identify the differences among objects. Okay, again, tandaan. Kapag nagko-compare ka, nagko-kumpara tayo ng objects, ibig sabihin, hinahanap natin ano ang magkatulad dun sa dalawang object. That means comparing. Pero kapag sinabi naman natin contrasting, kaya nga contrast, ibig sabihin, kumbaga, parang opposite. So, hinahanap naman natin ang pagkakaiba ng mga bagay-bagay or event. Okay, so sa madaling salita, Compare is similarities and contrast is for difference. Comparison and contrast is a rhetorical style that discusses similarities and differences between two or more things, feelings, ideas, objects, places, etc. 
This rhetorical style is one that you will usually use as a complete essay, but you can also see a lot of it in paragraphs or any type of essay where you need to make some sort of comparison to better illustrate a point. A compare and contrast essay has two things to do. It explores the similarities and differences of at least two different things. First, you need to find a reason for comparison to make sure both items have co something in common. After that, you'll define their differences. You may arrange the compare and contrast essay using either the alternative approach, state one aspect of one thing and then discuss the same aspect of the other object and how it is similar or different. Or the black approach, which means to discuss all aspects of one thing and then discuss all aspects of another. Let us look at a real-life example. You are eating a hamburger for lunch and your friend is eating a cheeseburger. You compare the hamburger and the cheeseburger by noting that each contains around patty of beef, a spread of mayonnaise, ketchup in a piece of bun. You also noted that each patty has been seasoned and cooked in the same way. The cheeseburger, however, contains a slice of cheese while the hamburger does not. Also, it takes longer prepare than a hamburger. To contrast the cheeseburger and the hamburger, you note that the cheeseburger takes 12 minutes to prepare while the hamburger takes only 10 minutes. You note further that the cheeseburger cost 18 pesos while hamburger cost 15 pesos. In addition, you find that you prefer the taste of your friend's cheeseburger to the somewhat more bland taste of your hamburger. In fact, it may just be this difference in the taste of the two burgers that helps you decide which to choose next time. This is the end of our lesson vlog about classification. I hope you learned something from me. Again, this is Teacher Tin May. And see you on my next vlog. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates. Bye!